We did a whole video on how to remove and install joiner knives. I will link to that in the video description. So we can clearly see the nick. Actually, there's one there, a couple right there. So we'll clean these up and make them ready for sharpening. Get some uh, unexpected corrosion on the faces of two of the three of these knives. I don't know if it's just been from being stored here in the basement. Great place for some scotch bright. Should be all it would take to do it, oh, having a scotch bright. We're doing a few things different than we were doing with the uh, conical sander for wood. Um, in this case, I have taken my carriage and slid it all the way over as far as it can go to the right. Now, how far can it go depends upon whether you have a lift assist device installed on this whether you have your extension table on it. Um, with my 510, I actually keep my extension table on it because I have it configured a little different. Uh, you can see how this one is designed or is installed with the, uh, with the table support tubes off to the right-hand side. So when this is installed, it's actually hanging out over the bench tubes um, I typically will configure this the opposite direction using these two mounting holes. Um, I did that with my 510. I have yet to do that here with the 520. So I'm going to just leave that table off completely. But uh, this way, I can operate this whole thing from this end of the machine. Okay, the eagle-eyed among you can see that we have this configured quite a bit differently than we did last week. Uh, first and foremost, when you sharpen with the conical sanding disc and the sharpening jig, you don't tilt the table four degrees. Yes, the disc is still set itself at four degrees, but we do not match that by tilting the table in. The reason is Shopsmith has extruded into this um, the angle that the knife is held so that we get the exact angle ground onto the bevel here without the need of tilting the table. Now, the advantage of this is we can now have our table straight, level, and if we have an extension table, we can butt it against that extension. If it's a Model 500, a 510, 520, we could even have tubes running between them to connect them to give it more rigidity. Um, I don't normally do that. What I like to do with my 510 is I'll have my extension table dropped as low as it can go. Then I slide the carriage as far to the end as it can go. And once I have this positioned at the height I like, I'll bring that extension table up and just support from the bottom. With the 520, I can't really do that because I have knobs underneath here on the fence rail. But anyway, I like this without an extension table beyond it because um, I'm, I'm reaching over the table to guide this through as it is. And uh, that's a little bit too much reach for me. We, uh, we loosen this. Uh, in fact, let's take this off because I want to show you something. This is a little extruded aluminum jig that is designed to hold either your 12 inch long shopsmith planer blades or your um, your four inch long shopsmith joiner blades or knives and you can see underneath here there are these springy flat washers and those washers have caused people some trouble there's a there's a right way and a wrong way, and really they're a little bit too large if you ask me. Um, but if you have those with their cup side down, it's possible that that curled edge can wrap over, can wrap over and get down in where the blade needs to sit, throwing your blade off just a, a little bit. So I want to be sure that I have those positions so that the, uh, the corners of them are springing up. Let's also wipe any crud out of that, that groove. Anything that could cause that knife to not sit, these three knives to not sit perfectly flat. You see here these washers. They're designed so that when you loosen 
the, uh, the wing nuts on this hold down that it springs up and releases the knives a little easier. And we're gonna take these blades and lay them in so that they're oriented with a flat face facing the disc. So the, the back side of the blade is facing up. And we can put all three of these in side by side, like so. And they can touch each other, but we don't want them jamming against each other. Bring this down. And you all know me, with a washer like that, I like to have the smooth edges pointing down. If there isn't a burr, I want the burr facing up. This matches the wedge shape of the Shopsmith joiner and planer knives. And as I'm tightening it, it draws them nice and tight to the bottom of that extrusion. Okay. Just like so. Next, I'm gonna bring this over and I'm gonna adjust with this set right by the edge. Um, I'm gonna adjust the height of my table so that I'm about an inch below the top edge of the disc. So I've got the height of my table adjusted so that I'm about an inch below the top edge of the disc. Um, I've got my carriage locked. I've got my table tilt handle locked. I've got my table height locked in place. Here's another one of those spots where I'll probably go ahead and drop my, my stop collar that I've added onto this post just so that nothing moves on me. And I'm gonna bring the fence over and I want that fence to be locked in place so that the edge of that extruded jig is just ever so slightly overhanging the edge of my table, just a smidgen. Okay. And then from here, got my headstock locked. I'm gonna extend my quill over and just touch the disc to the blade. Just barely touching. In fact, I'm going to go just a little bit more. Extend the quill just a tad. I want, there we go. I want it, I just want to hear it scratch against that just slightly. Not putting any pressure against that disc. There we go. So just a few more things about this setup. You'll notice I've removed my lower saw guard. It's a plastic saw guard. And it is possible to use that guard to uh, catch any metal shavings. However, to do that, you need to first make sure it's clean of all wood dust, and then you really need to line it with aluminum foil. Um, and I actually had one of those start to smolder and melt a little bit after sharpening. So I've stopped using that. And what I use instead is just a piece of scrap wood that I've got uh, some aluminum foil attached to it, and I got a magnet. So I just uh, slide this over here and that protects, protects my way tubes. I'm gonna stand off of the back side of this machine now, or off the right hand end. So we always start at the front end of the fence and we're going to slide this all the way past, all the way across, keeping everything firmly in place against the fence and against the table. Now, at, there is a point where we run completely off the fence right about here and I should be cleared of the blades at that point. We've got some little nylon glides here that run against the fence and there are these glide strips on the back that are also running or on the bottom that allow this to slide smoothly. We got to be careful that we don't let it, uh, let it drop off, we don't lift it, we don't roll it, we just keep it against the corner of the fence and the table. I'm gonna run this at slow speed right now. I've got everything locked in place. Let's just give this a try. Now 
nothing happened. So I need to extend my quill. So we've taken one pass. And by the way, I bought this second hand and somebody ran the entire jig through, scuffing it up pretty well. That means they've over sharpened their blades. Um, but right now I, I'm, I'm getting a little bit of randomness to the sharpening action. Let's run this through again, making no changes at all. Again, we're going slowly. You can hear it, I can feel it. We're still making contact with the abrasives. Still seeing some sparks. And we are almost covering the entire bevel with a sharp edge. Again, the edge is up here. The edge is sharp. <laughs> We're just grinding the bevel to match. It's not critical at this point because it's, if that bevel is sharpened all the way up towards the, the cutting edge, it's, it's sharp. So I'm going to go one more time, and then we'll be done. There we go. Now, if we did it right, we will have a slight burr on this edge right here. It will knock that burr off with our oil stone or water stone. And then these knives will be ready to head back into the joiner. Um, also, I don't see any signs of the previous nick. If I wanted to, uh, to take a little bit more off, maybe I have a nick and I'm not quite through that. One of the ways I can do that is I can extend my quill but that's kind of a coarse adjustment. I can make a finer adjustment by lowering the table. And because this is a cone shape, the lower I go, the closer that abrasive, in effect, is getting to the blade. Um, I, I'm using a stop collar down here. I've talked about these in the past. Um, I use these just kind of as a safety measure to make sure that the table doesn't ever lower if, uh, if it would ever come loose. Uh, one of the things I can do with this, though, is I can use that with a, with a little shim, a feeler gauge, if you will, between this collar and the carriage. And then all I have to do is loosen this and drop it down onto that stop collar. And I've dropped my table, whatever amount I'm shooting for. So let's, uh, let's run this through again. Taking off just a smidge more. No nicks, nice and shiny. So this process differs just slightly if you're using this to sharpen your 12 inch shopsmith planer knives. 
Um, and that is you're going to sharpen all three knives with the machine set up in whatever setting that you have it. And then if you're gonna lower the table or move the quill, you then run all three knives through again. This keeps everything properly balanced, properly weighted, cut to the same height and so on, or ground to the same height. But with the joiner knives set up, we're doing all three at once. They're all done at once. That makes that uh, really, really slick. So that's uh, the conical sander for sharpening. If you missed the uh, conical sander for uh, wood edges, I would encourage you to follow the link in the video description. Channel members, you guys are awesome. We'll see you midweek for our follow-up and make it a great day.